Hey YouTube, I wanted to get out and make a video real quick. Uh, as you can see, I got a different scenery around me this time, not sitting in my regular little chair. Uh, a couple reasons. One, uh, I got a new microphone uh, for the show, Six Pack Philosophy. I'll put a little link to that channel. I think I put that on the top left. Uh, if not, you can check out, just search Six Pack Philosophy, you'll find it. Um, and I want to try it out. Unfortunately, I can't show you guys because it's attached over here. So, um, we'll just see how the audio comes out. Uh, also, a quick note on putting links up. I think last time I put out a video, I talked about putting a card in the bottom right-hand corner of the video. And apparently, it's been a while since I was putting out YouTube videos. And you can't do that anymore. You can only put up in the little thing. I guess on the video will be up here because it's reversed. But you can only put the little dot as a link. So I'll start doing that for stuff I need to link to. Um, what I wanted to talk about today was actually Fermi's Paradox. Uh, anyone who's not familiar, it's this idea that... Um, if we live in a universe that's really hospitable to life and uh, it should be abundant, then why don't we see it anywhere? And if uh, we live in a universe that is uh, not hospitable to life, then why are we here? I'm oversimplifying, of course, but that's, that's the gist of it. And I recently watched a really interesting TED Talk on the subject where uh, the idea he's putting forward is that Fermi's paradox is 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 a paradox and the solution to that paradox is that there is a barrier to entry into the intelligent life realm what we consider intelligent life uh, you know class uh, I forget how the class go I guess class two and above or even even where we're at there's a barrier to entry to that but for some reason, we've already passed that. And he put forward a few proposals for what that could be the mitochondrial uh, introduction into the cell. Uh, it could be vertebrates. Who knows? There, there, could be, there could be a ton of barriers. But we crossed it somehow. We made it through, maybe through sheer luck. And his conclusion is that if that is the case, if we have crossed the threshold, that we could be the first spacefaring... Uh, intelligent uh, race. Now, uh, that doesn't mean there won't be others, but we could be a few thousand years ahead, uh, maybe even a million years ahead of the next one. And if that's the case, you know, whenever we talk in, in movies about um, finding that intelligent life, we talk about them coming out and showing us some some greater intelligence, some some greater philosophy, some some better way of life. But the interesting thing here is if we do have the head start that he suggested, then there may not be anything else. We may be the ones that have to provide that path to someone else, uh, or there may not be anybody else. It may just be that we have to figure it out ourselves. So, um, this, this really kind of hit me uh, earlier I was I was having a, a bit of a disagreement with somebody and uh, you know we, we both got a little bit of upset and so I started walking around thinking about people thinking about their life experience uh, partially because part of this was due to miscommunication on both our parts what they're thinking about what's important to them and how much I miss on the day-to-day -day when I'm, I'm looking at people and just judging what I see on the surface and how many of our problems could be mitigated if we could just find a better way of empathy. Now, now part of this issue is uh, spoken communication is, is such a basic uh, means of communication. It's, it's, it's lacking a lot of depth, a lot of history and now we're transitioning more and more into written communication which is even more lacking than that. Um, more stable, for sure, more technical, but not great at nuance. It, it takes a lot of writing to communicate small amounts of nuance. And, you know, to, to how do we fix our communication? 
I don't know the answer to that. Uh, that may come in the form of technology, evolution, uh, or something else entirely. Uh, but I think there's another question that we can address more readily uh, and immediately, which is how do we approach people? How do we approach each other? And do we seek to take the time to understand each other and each other's stories? And how important is it that we do that? I think just finding importance and reaching across to other people and understanding their point of view is important. We, we, we're developing a culture right now in politics, uh, in some religions, uh, to make it a, a, a albatross on people who try and reach across. We, we encourage division. We encourage not reaching out to people around you because... If you're doing that, you're weak or you're abandoning your cause. And I wonder where that's coming from and, and what that's going to come to a head to and what's going to be the ultimate solution. And what does that kind of behavior mean long term if we are... The, the, the answer to the Fermi paradox is that we are thousands or millions of years ahead of the next one. That we are one of the first. You know, maybe there's one ahead of us and it's, it's on the other side of the universe. But as far as life in our little corner of the galaxy, we, we are ahead of the race. If that's the case, how do we need to be looking to become the very intelligent, uh, well-reasoned, um, um, uh, good alien society that we write about so often in literature um, or will we become the very uh, doomsday predictions for others that we so often talk about in, in, in uh, less optimistic writings about aliens so anyway that was my thought uh, honestly this is one where I don't have very many answers uh, except to say love each other try and reach out, try and understand I promise that person that you sit there and think is stupid or doesn't care or is mean hearted. Um, they have a point of view too. And I, I bet if you just take a few minutes to reach out and understand that person, uh, you'd realize they're not as one dimensional as, as you perceive them to be. So anyway, this one was just kind of off the cuff. So I'll let you guys uh, get back to your day. In fact, I think my dog has found a squirrel. So. I better tend to her. So, see you guys later. Hopefully the audio was good. Bye.